hi, and uh, welcome back. My name is Sheldon McLeod, and this is Thinking Out Loud, presented to you here in the Saltwire Network. My chance to dig into some of the stories, some of the issues, some of what's happening around us, and it's, yeah, trope in the media. We do these stories about anniversaries. We do stories about uh, recogni- recognizing official days. I'm really glad to not talk specifically about politics in a way. Uh, the conversation today has to do with uh, non-disclosure act or NDAs, as they're sometimes called. Uh, This was a commentary that was in Saltwire that you can read if you head on over. Uh, Non-disclosure agreements have become a tool to silence victims of abuse. It was presented by Liz LeClaire, a volunteer with the Can't Buy My Silence campaign. And uh, Liz LeClaire is here to join the conversation. And it's nice to meet you this way. Thank you very much for speaking with me. Oh, thank you for your interest in the subject. And let's talk a little bit about your background and how you come to this topic and to this opinion piece in particular. Where did it start for you? Uh, Yeah, I've been extremely uh, vocal about my experience. Um, I'm a professional fundraiser. I've worked in the sector for 20 years. As you can imagine, there's a lot of interesting power dynamics, uh, predominantly female industry, lots of wealthy older male donors, um, and I've had my own experiences with sexual harassment and assaults as a result of my work in the sector. Um, And when uh, I started doing some work on actually um, after filing my own human rights complaint in Nova Scotia and and dealing with that monstrosity, um, I decided that what I wanted to do was actually work on changing legislation. And I became aware of the Camp by My Silence campaign when uh, Prince Edward Island became the first province in Canada to pass that bill. Uh, It's now an act as of May 2022 um, and uh, really have been pushing pretty hard here in uh, Nova Scotia to encourage our government to do the same. I had hoped that they would have tabled this and passed it in um, the spring or the fall sitting, unfortunately, they decided to do a jurisdictional review, um, whatever that means, because there was only one jurisdiction that at that time had the legislation in place. Um, so we're continuing to try and ramp up pressure on the government and the legislature to uh, consider this bill and, and pass it this spring. And and I want to ask your thoughts on the Prince Edward Island legis- legislation and perhaps your thoughts on what Nova Scotia could do to follow suit. But let's go right back to the root of what this is, uh, what an NDA actually is and why it's in this context a dangerous thing. Right. So non-disclosure agreements or confidentiality agreements, as they're sometimes called, um, many of your viewers and listeners would be familiar with. Uh, signing those as part of their employment agreements uh, in regards to protection of intellectual property, meaning that the origins of it was really in the tech sector in the 90s in California, when people were really job hopping from one place to another and had really proprietary information that they would be able to take from one competitor to another. So they were asked to sign these NDAs to ensure that that information, they were never allowed to talk about what they learned from one employer to the next makes sense in a competitive business environment. But what happened is that it's proliferated um, and lawyers started using this, realizing it was an effective tool for um, asking people who are provided settlements, employment settlements or settlements in court to sign NDAs in order to ensure their their silence effectively around a, a whole host of issues. And really it's gone from being something that was an effective tool for um, protecting intellectual property to now being used, as many people would know, the Harvey Weinstein scandal, um, the recent scandal with Hockey Canada, and uh, there's more more cases. I mean, Prince Edward Island, um, uh, the president of Prince Edward Island, uh, the university there, uh, uh, infamously had significant number of NDAs uh, as well in regards to sexual harassment and abuse. So it's not just um, a global issue or something that happens in big cities. It happens in our own backyard. Um, and I think it's something that the public needs to be aware of because it's not something people worry about until they have to sign one or find out that their compensation is tied to one. So you use a quote from a uh, veteran labor lawyer, Ron Pink, uh, NDAs are a murderous tool. I may have seen that interview. W- what were you referring to? What was he referring to? Right. We were, uh, the Canadian Bar Association fairly recently voted 90, I believe it's 94% in favor of banning the misuse of non-disclosure agreements in cases of human rights or violations or abuse cases. Uh, So Ron and I were interviewed on CBC uh, Information Morning, and when asked the question um, about what NDAs were like, I mean, Ron uh, is very familiar with them. Uh, I know he's 
he's learned uh, through his career that using them has been a horrible experience for people on the other side of the table and for for his actual clients. Uh, so a murderous tool, I mean, you're essentially taking away someone's story. Um, they've already been through horrific trauma, uh, maybe rape, maybe sexual, some other form of sexual assault, maybe sexual harassment, uh, racial discrimination, uh, discrimination against their human rights characteristics, whatever that might be, disability, et cetera. And uh, then you're basically, when you receive compensation, cannot talk to anyone but a lawyer or an accountant. Can't tell your family, you cannot tell your partner, you cannot tell friends and family. So it becomes a re-traumatizing of victims. I guess in some ways you can say something, but at the legal peril of that agreement, which says you may be financially responsible. I, I, I just, you know, for people who are trying to rationalize how you can go through a process, a judicial process that says, yes, there was something that was done, but well, here's how we settle it. We just won't talk about it again. That just doesn't seem like it really fits within the whole open judicial system that we have. No. Uh, so, I mean, that's the whole point, right? Uh, lawyers, and I, I think one of the things is is that uh, we already had, what's really interesting, we already have legislation around what they call uh, slander or liable in Canada. So really when it comes down to it, if the concern on the other side of the table, if the person that's committed the the abuse is that their story, this story would get out, the only reason you would have to worry is if it's not true or slanderous or liable that someone's speaking. So confidentiality agreements or NDAs are this extra layer of, of suppression um, and restriction of somebody being able to talk about what happened. And really, ultimately, when you think about it, protects those people who are the abusers and the companies, organizations, law, law firms that have helped them perpetuate abuse. I mean, the reason why Harvey Weinstein was such a prolific um you know, abuser of women was because no one could talk. So it whisper networks are certainly something. However, um, I've been part of them and I know women that uh, also are a part of them. We all know who the abusers are, even in, in our own city, in our own province. Um, but we know that if we're caught talking about them, that we face the chance of having massive liability. Um, you know, I, the individual that uh, harassed me for the better part of uh, five years in my role from job to job to job um, is a multimillionaire. I, I do not, most of us cannot counter that level of uh, wealth and privilege. Um, and they know that usually these individuals take advantage of those situations. The law that was passed in Prince Edward Island, I, I know was a, you know, a part of the media, we talked a little bit about that and why it was significant. It was a huge step forward. Are you proposing similar legislation? How would it differ? How would it be the same? What should the underlying, I guess, philosophy be or, or the underlying legal argument be that these NDAs are not to be used or should not be used in this way? Yeah, so I think it's really important. A lot of people seem to think that this is a, a bill asking for a complete ban of non-disclosure agreements, and it's not. Um, so it is not saying that we get rid of them altogether. There certainly are appropriate uses for them. What the bill, the model bill that Can't Buy My Silence, uh, Dr. Julie McFarlane and Zelda Perkins have put together, the model bill actually outlines uh, a number of steps that are required in order for if an individual who has been the victim of some form of abuse would like to sign an NDA or would would feels that that's important in order to protect their privacy, they can still go forward. However, there would be a number of checks and balances. What it is saying is that lawyers, employers, individuals who are in this process cannot tell a victim that the, the compensation is contingent on a non-disclosure agreement. Because right now, I'll tell you right now, even in our Nova Scotia Human Rights Commission, uh, I went through that process. I was offered an initial potential settlement, but it was contingent on signing a non-disclosure agreement. So I, I had the privilege of being able to say no. Most people don't, um, and they don't know what they're signing. And you are not afforded a lawyer as part of that process. So. It, it's just continual one t uh, after the other abuse by people with privilege, power and money uh, to abuse the system. Uh, so the, the act itself uh, it is uh, basically saying that this would no longer be permitted. Um, there would be a bunch of checks and balances in place and that in order for an individual to sign an NDA in these cases, they would have to be afforded a lawyer or some kind of legal counsel to before they sign. And do you see any similarities between, you know, progressive conservative government and Prince Edward Island, a progressive conservative government, Nova Scotia, the possibility that this might move forward? 
At this time, no. Uh, so the premier and his team have made it abundantly clear um, to myself and the campaign and to many others working on this, uh, that this is not a priority for them. I'm not entirely sure why. I don't understand why it wouldn't be. Um, there's nothing certainly progressive about that opinion. Um, as we're heading into International Women's Day and a, a lot of reflection on uh, lifting up women, women are disproportionately impacted by NDAs, uh, women of color in particular. Um, so I think uh, I, w I really don't understand at this point what's holding us back. The jurisdictional review, we now have um, the UK and Ontario have both banned the use of non-disclosure agreements in educational settings, settlements. Uh, BC is looking to table the legislation this spring. Manitoba's tabled the legislation and you know it continues to snowball. So I think either our government's going to step up and be a part of this movement or they're going to be shown <laughs> to be left behind. I'm not really sure what's holding them back. I certainly would welcome the premier and his government stepping up and passing this legislation as soon as possible. Anything else you want to add, Liz? Uh, no, I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, people sort of feel this is a very sort of narrow issue, but I think the consequences of NDAs are significant for a whole host of reasons. So I really look forward to the day when they're, they're banned for these purposes in our province. Um, it means it'll be a safer place for most of us to be. So... Uh, she is Liz LeClaire, volunteer with the Camp By My Silence campaign, uh, and she joined us uh, as she's in uh, Ontario for for a conference after Me Too. You said is the yes, uh, yeah. So I'm I'm here in Toronto uh, for the launch of the After Me Too website, which is going to be a free repository of information around uh, what to do if you are experiencing sexual harassment or harassment in the workplace. Um, so I'll look forward to sharing that with everybody as well, and I'll, I'll send you the link to the site as soon as it goes live. All right. Well, thank you for this and uh, safe travels on the way back home. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.